Hey guys, Nikolai Tedeschi back here with a new video. The long anticipated Toy Story full collection three year anniversary video is finally here guys. The wait is over. And boy have we come a long way since that video. In my first video I only had 33 characters. And since then we have added 57 more making it a whopping 90 characters I'm gonna be showing you guys in this video. In that first video, I said I was gonna briefly and quickly explain all 33 of those characters and it was still like a 15 minute video, which I guess is pretty good for my standards now. Most of my videos now are around 20 minutes, but this video is probably gonna be around an hour long, hour 30 maybe. So grab some popcorn, grab a snack, a drink, relax. This is gonna be a long video. If this is the first time you're watching the Toy Story YouTube Nikolai Tedeschi channel, then hello, welcome. I'm Nikolai Tedeschi. I collect and review film accurate Toy Story toys, which you can check out over here. All my past 15 videos from the past three years, and I have a playlist down below which has all the videos. So if you want, you can pause this video and check out all those before, or you can just stick here for the long, long video. So without further ado, let's get this video started and not waste any more time. So how this video is gonna go is I'm gonna briefly and quickly talk about every single character that I own, but if there's a special story or memory that I have with that character, then I'm going to explain that as well. And I already know this video is gonna take a few days to film because my camera's battery is gonna keep dying, so sorry in advance about the lighting. That's still something I haven't mastered yet in my videos, but anyway, here we go. And one more little side note, all these characters are gonna be shown in film order. So obviously we're gonna be starting with the man himself, Sheriff Woody. So I first got this guy on my 12th birthday in 2009. You can see here on his original boots, which I removed about six months ago to put on these more film accurate boots. If you wanna see that video of me modding Woody, check out right here, check out that video. But we also modded his hands for that more film accurate open hand that he has. Even though this Woody came out the same year as the 2009 Cloud Logo Woody came out, this was the second best version. This was the Playtime Woody that also came out. This Woody back in 2009 either retailed for $20 or $30. That's why I call him the second best version because the $50 version was the top tier Woody where he would come with extra quotes. He could talk by himself. He had better detail. But this Woody was still fantastic. His head is also custom swapped. This head is from the soft and huggable Woody from 2019 when Toy Story 4 came out. The reason I use this face is because it has a more film accurate smile than the open mouth one that was on every other Woody doll at the time. My original Woody had a broken holster, which I eventually fixed in that update video. Another thing to note on Woody is that I changed his voice box pull string to the Toy Story 4 accurate version of that because there's real Tom Hanks voice boxes out there, which if you guys didn't know, Tom Hanks' brother Jim Hanks, he voices all the toys and all the merchandise for Woody, not Tom Hanks, but there's customizers out there that actually have a Tom Hanks voice box that were original clips from the Toy Story movies that they put into the Woody doll, but I didn't want to do all the functions and all the electronics with that, but the no pull string look is good enough for me. But yeah, guys, I think we've talked enough here about Woody. He's my first toy in my collection, and uh, he means a lot to me. He means a lot to me. So let's move on to Buzz Lightyear next. So where should I even start with this Buzz Lightyear toy? He's literally one of the coolest toys ever. Seriously, he has so many functions. His wings can pop out, obviously. He's got the laser. His fingers move individually. He talks. I am Buzz Lightyear. His wrist communicator opens. He even has certain quotes when you open it. It's awesome. And it has certain sound effects. His waist has really nice joints. And I never owned a Buzz Lightyear as a kid, so I actually got him with a re-release of the Toy Story Collection signature collection uh, in 2019 when Toy Story 4 came out. So that's the day I got it. And you can put him in a flying pose and he actually like mimics flying. It's so cool. Look. And when you put him down, it does like the jet exhaust sound effect. The galaxy is safe once again. And my favorite part about this Buzz Lightyear is that he glows in the dark and his wings light up. And obviously the camera's not gonna pick it up very well. Oh so God. cool. And the only major function that he's missing on this toy is the karate chop action, which is okay. You can't have it all, right? There's also mods where you can take off his entire helmet because he really only has his helmet like this in the first movie. When he thinks he's the real Buzz Lightyear and doesn't realize that he's actually a toy. And there's actually really amazing customizers out there on Instagram on stuff that make better film accurate Buzz Lightyear faces than what we got here, which I plan on picking up very soon. So stay tuned for that video. And the signature collection of Buzz came in this box. It's an amazing film accurate box with the same writing that he read off in that first movie. Bunch of the features below. And that's an old Buzz that belonged to my brother back in 2010, which I'm gonna make a custom of a Mrs. Nesbitt with the broken arms. The spaceship also had little wings that you could attach to it as well. Other than that, that's Buzz Lightyear. He's an amazing toy and he's definitely in my top 10 if I ever remade one. 
The next character is also a character I'd put in my top 10 list, so there you guys go. You already have three of my favorite characters in that list. A little spoiler warning in this video, but it is Bo Peep. There was like only one Bo Peep toy that came out back in the 90s, which was like a Barbie. It wasn't even like this. But when Toy Story 4 came out, they finally released a Toy Story Signature Collection Bo Peep. And I didn't even wait until they all inevitably hit the clearance shelf. I paid the full $100 for her when she came out day one, which I don't regret because she's an amazing, amazing piece. Everything on her is perfectly stitched. This bonnet is removable, her head can turn, her arms can move up and down, side to side. And my favorite part about her is this big dress of hers. Look at that, amazingly stitched. I love the polka dots. And even under her dress, they went out of their way to put this little white sheet of fabric that has amazing detail in it. Her blue jumper jumpsuit is very nice detail as well. She can bend at the knees, and you can even turn her lower leg all the way around. And not to mention she can hold her staff very well is nice. It fits in her hand very good. She's an absolute must-have for Toy Story fans. Next, it's only appropriate to do her loyal sheep, which are Billy, Goat, and Gruff. And yes, I'm counting them as three different characters for this video because, I mean, why not? Not much to say about them, to be honest, but their heads can turn all the way around for whatever reason, if you ever wanted to do that. And they're very hollow inside, so you can squeeze them like this just in case water or something gets in there. But their legs don't move, which is funny that they have that because in the movie, they're ceramic. They're not plastic or plush or anything. Same with her, she's also just plastic, not ceramic. The next character is another one of my favorites, which I mean, at this point, they should all just be on that list, but it's uh, Mr. Potato Head. Oh God, I love this guy so much. This is the Toy Story Collection Mr. Potato Head. I got him in 2010 for my birthday. Unfortunately, Thinkway Toys never made a counterpart Mrs. Potato Head like they did with this guy, but that's okay. There's customizers from 13 years ago when the movie came out that tried to make Mrs. Potato Head with these parts and it did not look very good. But nowadays we have amazing customizers that 3D print and hand make Mrs. Potato Head, which look absolutely amazing. He retailed for $50 back in the day. I'm Mr. Potato Head. And he know? talks, but mine's kind of broken. It's been broken for a long time. You know what you're looking at. You hear that? It's horrible. Ah, turn it off. I do want to update him. I want the Toy Story Replica UK Custom Mr. Potato Head, but their shop is MIA at the moment, which I don't know when their shop is going to come back because I really want the Custom Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head because, like I said earlier, Thinkway Toys never made a Mrs. Potato Head, so the Mrs. Potato Head that we got around 2019 does not look like this guy. She's a lighter skin. Her parts are cheap. They're plastic. They look nothing alike but I have her. You'll see her later in the video when I review the Toy Story 2 toys, but they just don't look well together. So I'm trying to get matching ones that have the same skin tone, same facial expression, same everything. They're the same size, same height. When Toy Story Replica UK eventually opens their page again because they sell amazing custom ones. So does Cop. Caillou Dong on Instagram. He makes amazing ones as well, but some of his customs are just a little too expensive and out of my price range. So I'll settle for a $400, $500 version that the Replica UK page makes instead. I also found this guy three years ago on OfferUp for a screaming once in a blue moon deal that I will probably never come across again. I won't spoil how much I got it for, but it was this guy in box with original tags. It was the find of all finds. Here's what the thumbnail picture looks like. I'll link it in the description below so you guys can check it out. It's it's a good watch. His mustache is also removable, so you can get that Toy Story 2 look if you want it instead. But this is my favorite part right here. If you scream at him, he'll break into pieces. Hey! That's literally the coolest thing about this toy. A lot of people hated it when it first came out and I still think people do hate it, but I love it. It's so quirky and gimmicky that those late 2000s toys are made, but you just have to love it. Or maybe I'm just biased because I grew up with it, but that's Mr. Potato Head. Definitely one of my favorites. The next character we have from Andy's room is Slinky Dog. That's actually a Slinky. Look at that. You can stretch him quite far. Look at that. Like a whip. Honestly, this is probably one of the better, more film accurate toys that an actual toy company made instead of a customizer that resembles Slinky from the movies. Besides little wheels here on the bottom of his feet. Slinky never had those in the movie and I don't know who thought that would be a good idea. Or maybe the original Slinky dogs from like the 40s, 50s had the little wheels at the bottom, but not the Toy Story version. He did come with a little string right here, but I ripped that off. That's also not accurate to the movie and he just looks a lot better like this, so. That's Slinky Dog. The next character we have is Rex. This is not the Toy Story Collection version that came out in 2009, 2010, which they did not re-release for the Signature Collection line in 2011 and 2019. God, I'm such a Toy Story nerd. 
This was just the second best version, kind of like how my Woody was the second best version. So this was $30. I got it back in 2017 after I graduated. And he's okay. He works. I believe he's the same size as the collection version. And he's a cool character. He's not one of my favorites from the movies, but he's still always a joy to watch on screen. Which I love how Pixar made the most terrifying, dangerous creature that ever walked the earth. Extremely nervous and not confident. You know, that's... Pixar at its finest. His arms move up and down, his tail is removable, and his head goes all the way around as well. That's what it looks like inside of his tail. And the removable tail actually helps me a lot when I'm trying to display him next to everybody because he takes up so much space with his tail like this. So I usually just take it off like that and you can easily put him in the back of the shelf instead of more up here because of how long his tail is. I don't think I ever plan on picking up the actual Toy Story collection version because this Rex is perfectly fine the way he is. And the only big differences between the collection version and this version is that that version talks and when he talks his head moves and I believe his arms and his tail move when he talks. The next character we have is Ham. This ham was made by the amazing customizer C Toys on Instagram. And I got this ham about six months ago now at this point, but before this ham I had this ham, which obviously you can tell the size difference. My old ham is actually made of real ceramic and my new ham is just plastic, but it looks like ceramic, doesn't it? But I got this version of ham in 2018 at the Disney store. It was around 20, 30 bucks. And it was okay for the time being, but what I really, really wanted was obviously a more film accurate ham. And this ham, he has removable eyes, removable eyebrows, a removable cork with custom coins in here. Look, we got this gold one here with a custom ham logo on it with his face and a cash money symbol there on the back. Same with this one, but it's just silver. He included four coins in it. Not only did this ham come with a certificate of authenticity, but he came with a certificate of collection, which I think is so, so cool. He only made 88 of them and I have the 50th one. And here's the awesome box that Ham was shipped in. See, Toys did an amazing job with this box as well. So you got that 27 years and a nice custom foam insert that he came in as well, just to ensure his protection. And a Mr. Potato Head bowler hat he included as well, which unfortunately doesn't fit on his head very well, but if you got it in the right placement, you can kind of just lay it on his head. The next character we have is Sarge and the Army Men, which technically I guess any of these can be considered Sarge, but I believe this is the only one that comes in the box that is like this in this pose, so I'm assuming this one's Sarge. And these guys are probably my favorite toys to display in my collection. They're just super easy to fill empty spaces with on my shelf. And I actually have two Bucket of Soldiers. This is one that I got back in 2009 or 2010, I don't really remember, but it's the white logo Toy Story Collection version made by Thinkway Toys, but I lost the lid a long, long time ago. But recently I bought this version from a thrift store for like 10 bucks. I was like, I have to have it. It still has the lid on it and there's no Toy Story logos anywhere on it, which is accurate to the movie, which I like a lot better. And the bucket of soldiers that I found at the thrift store also included a few paratroopers. This one I like to display near my shelf, hanging down. Super nice one. You just put some tape there on the top hangs perfectly. And this one I just haven't really unboxed yet. I don't know what to do with this one quite yet. Another noticeable difference is the coloring here. So this is the new one that I found at the thrift store. I think this is the 2019 Disney Store exclusive, I think. And here's the Thinkway version. So this one is obviously a lot smaller and the shades of green are different. Here we have RC from the first two movies and a brief cameo in the fourth film. And a very dusty RC, if I say so myself. I got this dude in 2019 for a very good price on offer up as well because he does not actually work. I tried putting batteries in and he just doesn't work. The batteries corroded so badly inside of this remote that there's no possible way of ever fixing it. Which I don't mind at all because he's just been sitting on my shelf collecting dust, so. He's a pretty hard toy to display in the collection as well because he's so massive. I usually put Buzz Lightyear and Woody on top of him. I did that a few times, but it didn't really work out. And I remember when these little videos came out back in 2010 when John Lasseter was explaining and talking about the Thinkway toys and how they could come to life and talk to you and talk to the other toys that also had the play mode feature, which this guy does. I think if you left him on for a little bit, he would drive around and do his own thing, which would have been a really cool feature to try out, but he's fine just like this. This next one's a fun one. This is my first of 38 custom toys in my collection, and it is Robot. Robot from the first and second movie, and also a brief, brief appearance in the opening of Toy Story 3. This amazing robot was made by Blind Squirrel Props on Etsy, and he lives like 20 minutes from me, which was surprising. This guy delivered to my house super, super quick. He is all 3D printed. His head moves, his arms move, 
They twist, they turn, his treads move on the ground, but he is my most fragile toy in my collection. So I don't like playing with him or touching him or trying to pose him at all because he's all super glued together. And even this little visor doesn't stay on well because this right here was a pain in the butt to get out. You had to cut this huge plastic piece out and put it on his face, which I tried my best to do, but the instructions weren't very good on how to do it. Blind Scroll Props also sells a light up version, which I did not want to pay the extra hundred dollars for. He even said it wasn't worth it because it just going to be sitting on your collection. I'm like, yep, gonna be sitting on my collection collecting dust. But here's the back piece. And if you eventually wanted to upgrade to the lighting piece, you could with this little part right here. It just plugs in right there and you could shove all the wiring and lighting in there. Which if you did get the lighting kit, I think the only thing that lights up is his brain, like in the film around here somewhere. And the switch does move as well. The nicest thing was you didn't have to paint any of the pieces except his little headphone piece right here, which I painted orange like the movie. Very cool toy that took me like eight to nine hours to build. Next we have Robot's Best Friend which is also a custom made by Toy Story Replica UK on Etsy and eBay and it is Snake which UK Replica was nice enough to include a stand for him because he's extremely hard to display without it. But Snake is all 3D printed and he looks very good next to Robot. I'm not the hugest fan of the paper that's just on him considering how much I spent on this guy, but from a distance it looks like it's painted on. It looks like it's part of it. Next is probably my favorite side character in Andy's room and it is Rocky Gibraltar. And this guy was definitely my first mind-blowing custom figure. Which I mean, just look at this guy. He looks exactly like the movie. It's insane. This was made by Cop on Instagram. He's the one that makes the really, really high detailed masterpieces, which I own, spoiler alert, three of his so far. So this is number one. You'll see the other two later on, but this guy, I had to have him. He's pretty expensive, I'll admit, but he was worth it for sure because there's no other customizers out there that ever made a Rocky that was this good. And toy companies like Mattel and Thinkway never made an actual Rocky toy. Well, they did. It was a little tiny one, a Toys R Us exclusive one, but it was nowhere close to being film accurate like this guy is. I waited eight or nine months for this guy when I bought it from Cop, which was a little ridiculous, but it was worth it when he got here because, wow. <laughs> Just look at this guy. And I still haven't super glued the little rock helmet thing on his head yet either, but I'll get around to it. I don't really want to mess up this guy. His limbs do move up and down, side to side. He can twist a little bit. A very, very cool toy that I wish we got more screen time with in the first two movies. So these next two characters are actually technically next six characters are all up there for my most film accurate toys. So here we have Dog Trochia. All six of these customs were made by Brian Ashford on eBay. I'll link him in the description below as well if you guys want to pick these up. These are perfectly painted Troikias, Russian nesting dolls from the first two movies. So film accurate, I had to have them. They actually open up so you could just stuff them all inside if you want. Actual wood, and they're actually made in Russia as well. So check that out. Super, super delicate pieces. Next is Cat, which I think is the most film accurate out of all five of them. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Next is Duck which is probably my least favorite. Then we have Fish and Ladybug. And the last custom made by Brian is Roly Poly Clown from the first and second movie. And I love this toy. He is so film accurate to the movie, it's insane. He actually rolls like in the movie and he jingles like you can briefly hear in the first movie when Mr. Potato Head slaps me, you can kind of hear the jingle. And it was never explained if this was either Andy's toy or if it's just Molly's toy, because it definitely is a baby toy. He's also made in Russia and just perfect, perfect detailing all around. Just amazing, love this so much. And he's actually made of wood. He's not made of rubber like he was in the movie. Next is Lenny. A very important toy in Andy's room in the first two movies. And he also made a brief cameo in the opening scene of Toy Story 3. I got him around the same time I got my Woody, so he's technically my second toy in my collection. You can actually look through him and his little knob here turns. Next is Etch-a-Sketch, and he played a very important role in the second movie when he helped Buzz and the gang track down Woody. I'm really bad at Etch-a-Sketch in real life. I have no idea how to really do this thing, but I know there's people out there that are really, really good with this Etch-a-Sketch thing. Are you guys good at Etch-a-Sketch? Let me know in the comments below. Next is Hockey Puck, a very, very minor character in Andy's room. I believe he only had like one scene. Kind of cool. He was also made by Toy Story Replica UK on Etsy. His arms move and his feet move. Here is Troll from the first and second movie that also made a brief cameo in Toy Story 3 as well. Just a regular Troll doll, nothing really to say about this. The only thing that's custom about her is this little outfit. 
and I found her on eBay for like $10, $20. Super, super cheap character to get if you guys are looking to complete your Andy's Room collection. Next is Sensei, which I believe he was only featured in the first movie. I don't remember seeing him in the second movie, which is weird that he wasn't in the second movie because at the end of the first movie, when they moved to their new house, you can see him in the background. So Andy kept roly-poly clown for the second movie, but he didn't want to keep Sensei that actually moves. Kind of weird, but okay. But it's a cool toy, I guess. It was made in 1989 and it still works. Next we have is Shark from the first two movies, and he was made by Toy Story QC, but I think he only made 100 of these, which I'm not sure if he's sold out or not by now. So if you guys want a film accurate shark, then I would rush over to his page ASAP and see if he still has any for sale. He's a pretty funny character in the film when he has the, hey, I'm Woody, howdy, howdy, howdy quote. And the coolest part about him is he actually does squeak. <laughs> and a pretty loud squeaker if I say so myself. <laughs> Next is a very, very dusty Mr. Mike. I got him for a very good deal on OfferUp. Someone was selling him for $20, which is an absolute steal. Unfortunately, he does not work, which is expected for a $20 find. His mic piece is coming off a little bit here, and he's very, very yellow on the back. All of his knobs and switches work though. Overall, just a nice display piece to have. Next is a Mr. Spell. Another crucial toy in Andy's room that helps the gang figure out the name of Al's toy barn. This is also another toy that toy companies never made. So this is custom made by Toy Story Replica UK again. And they did a fantastic job with this guy. You got the Mr. Spell writing engraved on the red handle there. You can kind of see it. And his quotes are removable with this little magnet piece right here. The buttons don't work. That's expected though. And I believe you can actually open this battery piece if you tried, but I haven't tried that yet. Awesome, awesome toy. Next is the Barrel of Monkeys, and these little guys were super, super helpful by getting our main characters out of sticky situations. And they're also great for filling in empty spaces on your shelf because you can just hang them like this all over your shelf. Next, we've got a bunch of tykes from the first and second movie. So starting with the real life toy that was actually made, we have the fire truck. And this included two Caucasian tykes and two African American tykes. You can put them up on here if you'd like. You can have two driving, and you can have two in the back. And this is also another one of Andy's toys that you can find at a cheap price on eBay, OfferUp, Macari, Amazon. So we had the four tykes, here's the extra two that came with it. And the rest of these tykes are all made by Toy Story Replica UK on Etsy and eBay. So first of all, we have the Shriner Tyke. I like his little fez cap going on. This one's probably the most memorable Tyke, not including the fire truck Tykes, because he has a scene where he's in a little red car when they're trying to hunt down who stole Woody. This is Hunter Tyke, I believe. Pretty self-explanatory with him, little Hunter cap. Dr. Tyke, I love the little chrome piece on the top here. Look, there's my camera. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory with this one. School Kid Tyke, Painter Tyke, this one's definitely my favorite. I love all the little details on him. I love the freckles. I love the paintbrush. Sailor Tyke, Blue Cap Tyke, or Civilian Tyke. And lastly, we have the Cowboy Tyke. And the only scene I really remember him from is the opening scene when all the Tykes were held hostage by Mr. Potato Head, or more accurately, One-Eyed Bart. And lastly, for Andy's room, fleshing out all those side characters, we have the Pink Teddy Bear. This teddy bear is so cool. I love him so much. I love how pink he is. And this was made by Eye Candy Shop on Etsy. If you guys don't remember him, he was in the first movie and a brief, brief cameo scene on the TV screen in Toy Story 2. And the only thing that this guy really does in the movie is just wave to Woody during the staff meeting scene. And speaking of the staff meeting scene, we have Dolly. And she is one of several characters named Dolly in the Toy Story franchise. But just like the pink teddy bear, she had a brief cameo scene where she also just waves to Woody down below. Her joints move and her arms are removable for whatever reason. Her legs can also kind of move, but I don't want to push it because I don't want to snap this. So this is pretty expensive custom. And the last character in that staff meeting scene and Andy's room technically in the first movie is Ducky. Not much to say about Ducky. Just a hard piece of plastic. And these guys were also made by Toy Story Replica UK on Etsy. You guys are gonna have that name engraved in your brain at the end of the video, I swear. <laughs> but pretty cute character. I like this ducky. And these next three little dudes are from Pizza Planet, and we've got the aliens. I first got these guys in 2009. You can clearly see all the damage on their faces. My friends and I used to throw them down the stairs, which they suffered some broken limbs because of that. But this guy always stayed intact. So yes, lots of wear and tear on these guys. I do plan on eventually picking a new setup that are clean. As cool as they are, they aren't really film accurate to the movies. In the movies, they're squishy and they actually squeak. But the only things that we got on the Thinkway toy version are these plastic non-squeakers. No articulation on any of them. They're just kind of like statues. And this next character I actually got like two weeks ago and it is Janie. 
This is one of Hannah's toys from that first movie that Sid takes. He runs upstairs and he rips her head off and puts like a pterodactyl head on her, which Hannah then screams. This was made by Toy Story Custom on Instagram. Next is the headless doll from the tea party scene with Mrs. Nesbitt. And her character name is actually just Little Sister. But she's pretty neat. I like the painted flowers on her dress and her body is just the same as Janie's. Next is another character that I'm definitely putting in my top 10, and it is the mutant sandbox doll from the end of that first movie, when they're all surrounding Sid and they scare him. This one pops up out of the sandbox like a zombie and starts walking like this. It's a creepy scene for sure. I would be traumatized for life if I saw this racing from my backyard. But she has phenomenal detail on her. I love the painted dirt all over her. And her hair is bendable, which is a really cool detail that he added. I love the crooked smile. I love the missing eye. A very iconic scene that she was in. And lastly for Hannah's dolls, we have Sally. Pretty much just a copy and paste of Janie, but without shoes and different hair. Now moving on to the Toy Story 2 toys, we have Mrs. Potato Head. Like I said earlier, this is not the Thinkway version because Thinkway never made a version. This is just like a $10 version that I believe Hasbro made in 2019. I'm not a huge fan of her. She's not very accurate to the movie. Her hat is and her eyebrows are, I guess, but her facial expression just isn't doing it for me. And here is the Toy Story collection Mr. Potato Head that I showed earlier. And you can obviously tell there's some big differences here. They kind of look good together, but for the most part, the different skin tone and her facial expression just don't go good together. So I'm a thousand percent going to be updating these two when the UK replica page eventually opens up their shop again. Another thing to add is she does come with extra pieces and I also put the Mr. Potato Head accessories in here as well, like the angry eyes and the mouth. Next is my first custom character that I ever got and it is Wheezy. This Wheezy was made by our friend Cop on Instagram and I remember being so excited when I first got him and being absolutely thrilled when I opened him and saw him out of the box. He also squeaks like the movie. Very loud squeak, louder than the shark squeaker. And he is a perfect height to the other characters. Definitely a top five contender for best custom toys that I own. And since we were just talking about Cop, this next one is my third and final custom made by him. And it is Stinky Pete. I am in love with this. This is my favorite custom in my collection by a landslide. And he is my most expensive toy in my collection. He was around $1,000 USD, but my God, was it worth it? Because this guy is perfect. It looks exactly like the one in the movie. If you want to see my unboxing and reaction when I first got him, check out this video right here. I go way more in depth with all of his detailing in that video. This guy is perfect in every conceivable way, <laughs> and he is the holy grail and staple of my entire collection. Everything on this guy is handmade hand detailed, hand stitched. But the fact that he went out of his way to add these unnecessary quotes is just the chef's kiss. I'll play one of them here for you, but if you want to see all the quotes, then watch that video. The show was canceled after that. Plastic boots, a removable hat, and he came with his trusty pickaxe, an engraved wooden pedestal, and he included two certificate of authenticities, which I have one right now on the wall and this one. Definitely my favorite custom in my collection. Here we have Jessie. I got her on June 8th, 2010. Well, her body at least. I did update her head in this video right here. And this is not the Toy Story Collection Jesse. This is the Playtime Jesse, the same one as my Woody. I mainly wanted to do the head swap on this one because I like the real denim pants because on the signature collection versions of the Woody and the Jesse here, she's got like a fake pleather material on her jeans. It just does not feel right. I don't actually remember if I put a voice box in her. I did, I did, okay. And I also wanted the real yarn hair that she has here, not the fake plastic one from the Playtime Jesse. And Sea Toys is making a film accurate Jesse head that I do eventually want to pick up whenever that is made. But to finish out the Woody's Roundup collection, we have Bullseye. I got him for Christmas in 2019 from the Signature Collection line. He's neat. You can put Jesse and Woody on here if you tried hard enough and put them in the right poses. And I'm so glad that Thinkway Toys included a stand for him with a nice little Woody's Roundup logo on the bottom there. But he's just a rag doll because he can't stand up on his own. And I'm not the hugest fan of his fake fabric tail going on here. Same with his hair up top, which is super dusty as you can tell probably. Next we have is Zerg. Back then you could buy him at the Disney store, but he does talk. His mouth lights up and his eyes in the dark. You can't really see because the glare, but I wish he came with the little yellow balls that go inside of his gun, but I'm sure you can just find some and put him in there yourself. He's got good articulation. He moves at the waist. You can extend his arms out all the way. His head can move side to side and he's got wheels on the bottom of his feet. Also has this weird button on the back. I'm not sure exactly what that does. Let me know in the comments down below if you know. Pretty great toy and he looks great next to Buzz Lightyear. Next character we have is Barbie. 
Not one of my favorite characters by any means, but hey, she was in the movie, so had to have her. I'm not sure exactly what Barbie this is. The fitness Barbie, the trainer, the yoga Barbie. I'm not sure. What do we call her, guys? She's got some colorful uh, leg warmers going on here. Very 80s. She's got removable pink shoes. And look at that. I never even noticed that she has little piercings in her ears. That's kind of cool. Never noticed that. But since we're talking about Barbie, let's talk about Ken next. I actually like Ken. This is actually a really cool figure. There's obviously several versions of Ken out there in the world, but this is the Toy Story 3 version with this exclusive face that he has. I really dig the outfit that I have on him as well with the leather jacket and these purple disco pants with these nice black dress shoes. Again, if you want more detail with him, then check this video out. But the outfit I bought him with is the animal loving safari Ken outfit that he wears for like a few scenes when we first meet him. And this is what he wears in like all the promotional images for Toy Story 3. Cool Ken doll, you can do some amazing poses with him, but I just display him hugging Barbie on my shelf. Very cool posing that you can get with these two. Next we have the big bad from the third movie and it is Lotso Huggin' Bear. And he does smell like strawberries, but the smell has definitely faded over the past 13 years. This was actually my brother's, he got this on his birthday in 2010 and he just gave it to me over the years. He never wanted it anymore, so I have it now. And he also does talk, but his batteries are just dead. He also has a play mode. Let's see if this works. Ooh, yeah, 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 no, no, no. That definitely doesn't work. I was on the try me mode earlier, but yeah, nothing much else to say about him except that he's the worst Pixar villain ever. He's horrible. That ending scene with him, man, he got what he deserves with that one. Next, we have one of Lotso's henchmen from Sunnyside, and it is Twitch. He does have a button right there in the middle of his abs, and when you press it, his wings do extend. Well, at least one of them does. I got him for around $100 on offer up back in 2019 and he's another one of my favorites. And Thinkway Toys did make this version, but it is not a signature collection version, which means he did not come with like a certificate of authenticity like the rest of the signature collection toys came out with. Another cool feature that he has, if you press down his face, his mouth opens. Little biting action there. And Thinkway Toys never made a staff for him, but there are customizers out there that do sell a staff. So I might eventually pick that one up someday, but for now, this is just fine. And a little side note here, I recently got this Lego Twitch here that I display in this case, but he's missing his antennas, which are super extremely rare to find nowadays. Everybody seems to lose them. But just that I show you guys this, this is one of my favorite minifigures of all time. That minifigure came out in the garbage getaway set back in 2010. The next Lot Show henchman that we got is Chunk. And this guy also has a play feature. If you watch this video right here, I couldn't find where his button was, but it's actually on top of his head right here. It's very, very camouflaged. You can't really tell. So when you press it, his head changes. But when he hits his head in the movie, it's actually over in this area, not over here, but who's really paying attention to that besides me? He's got some waist movement. You can move his arms, you can move his legs, his knees go up. Pretty hard character to find nowadays in good condition. So I'm glad I own him. Next we have Sparks. I bought both of these characters as a bundle on Makari last year for a pretty good deal, but I definitely like the chunk better than this guy. He's okay. His arms do turn, and he has some grip action as well, which is cool. His head can spin all the way around, and he's got wheels on the bottom of his feet, which I believe, if you put batteries in him, he actually does spark up. Pretty interesting character in the Toy Story franchise. Next is Stretch, voiced by Whoopi Goldberg. She's a villain in the film, and I don't know why she has this goofy smile on her face. I do plan on picking either Sid Toys or Cops Custom Stretch out there whenever those two release. They're actually film accurate scale compared to this. You can stand her up on all of her legs if you want to, but she's okay. Next is the character that I personally, for the most part, custom designed, and it is Big Baby. When I bought him, he had none of the markings on him, so I eventually just wrote on him and drew on him with the same tats from the movie. If you guys are having a hard time finding a big baby for yourself, just look up American Girl Doll on eBay or Macari and try to get one that has little to no hair on the back. I super glued his eyelid together so it stays in place. And this daisy necklace is actually from Passion for Pixar on Etsy. Very good material. It looks exactly like the one from the movie. And for the most part on the drawings, I think I did a pretty good job. I really like this one. That's probably the best one I did. And the little like Hawaii islands there on his bottom leg as well. And I also got this little yellow garb that Big Baby wore in the flashback scenes from Toy Story Custom as well. But unfortunately it doesn't fit in very well, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that just yet. Maybe I'll buy another Big Baby that actually fits in here. Next we have is the Jolly Chimp, or the Monkey. I originally bought this guy in 2012 for like around $80. My father and I were gonna make a custom monkey bomb from Call of Duty Zombies, but we just never got around to it, so thought I would just use him for my Toy Story collection because he was in that movie. He's got a switch here in the back to let go of the battery when one's in there, and the battery slot is on his butt. You move this little switch here and this opens 
And that's where you would put the battery. And he was a loud, loud toy when he worked. Like super, super loud. It was like this loud. He would clam really, really hard. You'd press this button on top of his head. Yeah, just like this. He moves a little bit. And then he would go back and then clap. Well, see what I, yeah, almost broke it there. Jeez, it got stuck for a second, but. And sometimes his mouth would open and his eyes would pop out like the movie too. Super, super creepy. I don't know how kids found this appealing back in what, the 30s or 40s when this toy was made? But yeah, nowadays it's just something you would see out of a horror movie. Yeah. Next is the chatter telephone that helps Woody out in the third film. And this is also one of the cheapest toys that you can still find today for under $15. And they all still look the same too. This one's really old looking, but I'm sure this was released in like the early 2000s or something. Or maybe even the 70s, 80s, 90s, who knows? And I actually really enjoyed his role in the movie. It's pretty iconic. And he still does ding. And lastly, to end off the sunny side characters, we just have this random yellow haired troll doll. And I got this little red dress as a gift from my friend Adam there on Instagram. So thank you again, Adam. And I just found the doll on eBay for like $10 with the blue eyes. She only appears when Andy's toys first arrive at Sunnyside. You can see her on the shelf. Now going into Bonnie's toys from the third movie, we have Dolly. And this is not, unfortunately, the Toy Story collection version of her. This is just a knockoff that I got from AliExpress for a way cheaper price than what the actual version of her is worth. But it looks identical to the real version, which I really don't care about getting the real version. I just want a better, more film accurate one. And there are some very slight detail and differences between this one and the real version. I suggest checking this video that Zay the Bill made. Very good video on how he explains the differences. But it's literally something you'll never notice unless someone like me or Zay the Bill points it out to you. But she's a cool character. I like her buttons. They're not printed on. When you move her head, her eyes move as well in like different placements. Pretty cool. Next we have is Buttercup, which is also the fake version of the real collection Buttercup. I found him funny in the fourth film when they were trying to send Bonnie's dad to jail, but other than that, he's okay. And honestly, I'm not really a huge fan of Bonnie's toys like at all. None of them really stand out to me. None of them really appeal to me. Andy's toys are obviously superior, like Rocky Gibraltar, Wooly Bully Clown, a lot cooler characters than, I don't know, Buttercup and Dolly. I have to mention, I do love the velvety fabric going on here as well. And finally, for my fake versions of the characters, I have <laughs> Mr. Prickle Pants. Also got from AliExpress, but it looks exactly like the real one. And I do like the theater aspect of this character. He's pretty funny with all the with all the Shakespeare stuff that he does. And I also love like the little German later hosen outfit he's wearing as well. I don't need the authentic versions to make me happy when these do just fine. Next is another character that I recently got, and it is Trixie. Trixie the Triceratops. And I had this little version for like two years, and I finally had the funds to upgrade to a more film accurate size scaled Trixie, which looks a lot better, thousand times better, which is a pretty good deal considering Cop sells one for around $800, which honestly is a lot better looking than this one. And quite frankly, I didn't want to spend $800 that he's selling his for, for a character that I really don't care about that much. $300 is fair for a fully custom 3D printed replica, but 800 is just a little too much for someone I don't care about. And I didn't really like her at first when I got her. There was just something off about her. I think it was the little beady little eyes she has here. In the film, she has larger pupils. These are just very, very small. And these horns broke off when I first got her out of the package. Oh, and there goes her mouth. And that's already starting to break, so maybe I shouldn't be touching her anymore. Yikes. Next is a really cool character that I also got from Toy Story Custom on Instagram, and it is Totoro. Look how big and fluffy this guy is. Oh, I love him. He was not featured in the fourth movie, which is really weird to me, which makes me think that Pixar lost the rights to the Totoro franchise, so they couldn't include him in the movie anymore. And I don't know if it's actually called the Totoro franchise. I'm not a fan of anime. I don't watch anime. I don't associate with anime, but I know he's from some sort of anime. I've seen a lot of pictures and videos about him. Just another background character in Bonnie's room. He doesn't talk. He doesn't really do anything. He just kind of stands there and, and looks cute. But Adam did an amazing job making him. Looks so accurate to the movie. Even down to little pieces of fabric being different color right around here on his chest. Next are the peas in a pod. Pretty cute little character from that third movie. Look, you can zip that up. You can zip that out. They can all pop out. I also don't think they were in the fourth film. I'll have to rewatch it, but I don't remember seeing them in the fourth movie. But they had some pretty cute and funny scenes in the third film. Next we have is Chuckles. Not a very good Chuckles by any means. It's not very accurate to the movie at all, but it's the best I can do for now. I got him at the Disney store for around $10 as well. And I will update him eventually, but then again, it's, you know, it's a character I really don't care about. If you're starting to notice a the theme with all of Bonnie's toys, I just... They're just not really my favorites. Hell yeah, I never actually noticed this as well, but you can actually put your finger in his pocket. Now starting off Toy Story 4, we have 
the green-haired boy. He was just in that opening scene for like a few frames in the movie. Helping Bo Peep and Woody and Jesse open the window so they could save RC. I love the yarn hair he has on the back. Him and the next character are also made by Adam. Toy Story Custom on Instagram. Next one we got here is just the door dog. Just a little plushy and you can actually hang him from the doorknob as well. It looks really nice. He pretty much just jingles and lets all the other toys know when Bonnie's coming back into the room. Next is the wonderful Forky from that fourth movie. I made him a few months after the fourth movie came out and I think I did a pretty good job. We got my name there on the bottom. It's very, very dusty right there though. I gotta clean that up. I think my favorite part about him is the little rainbow that I colored right here. I think that turned out pretty good. He's made out of a real spork, little googly eyes on him, and I used clay for his eyebrow and his mouth. Here we have the Toy Story 4 version of Bo Peep without her iconic pink dress. She's the same height as that Bo Peep though, and she pretty much has the same face as that version too. She's not bad. It's pretty cool to see her entire blue jumpsuit and what that looks like without the dress on. She's got the same articulation as the previous Bo Peep as well, and she has a little magnet piece right here too, which you you can place Giggle McDimples on. There's not much to her, just an accessory to Bo Peep. Her face doesn't change to her with the sunglasses, unfortunately. That would have been a cool little detail, but pretty strong magnet. Here we have Gabby Gabby, the more sympathetic villain in the Toy Story franchise. I got her for Christmas a few years ago, and I don't believe she's sold in America. I'm pretty sure you have to go through a third party website to pick her up if you want her. But she smells like baby powder. She's always smelled like baby powder ever since I got her out of the box. I don't know how to get rid of the smell, but it's just kind of an unsettling smell. I'm honestly surprised we got a Gabby Gabby toy. I didn't think we would, but I'm glad we did because I'm sure there was gonna be a customizer that made her for like $1,000. Next we have Bunny and Ducky. And of he does talk, they both talk. Haven't you seen a green bunny before? Green, bro, you're blue. <laughs> What do you mean green? Well, I guess kind of green. And these guys both are from the Signature Collection line when Toy Story 4 came out. I got him for my 21st birthday, and I picked him up on clearance at Target. And they're definitely the softest toys in my collection. And I love the little detail above his head here because they were carnival toys, and they're just hanging up there. Next is Keanu Reeves himself, <laughs> Duke Kaboom. He's also part of the Signature Collection line. Him and Forky were definitely the two standout characters for me personally. And it's got a cool feature with this TNT detonator where you would push it down and it would launch him. He's probably my dustiest figure. I never touch him. And he does come with a removable helmet. He also can be removed from his motorcycle and you can also put him in some super super cool poses just like the movie. Next we have Tinny. He was only in a background scene in that fourth movie inside that slot machine or whatever. Just a cool little easter egg toy if you've seen the short that Pixar made back in the 80s or 90s with him as the main character and that big ugly CGI baby that just looked awful. It would have been cool when he moves all of his instruments would go at the same time like it does in the short but that's probably just asking for too much. And the last two characters I have from the fourth film are the green and purple frog. And I don't really expect anyone to really remember these characters. They were just in the end credit scene. They were just carnival prizes hanging on that little shooting game. And then they were one in the game and then they went home with the kids. So pretty simple story with these two. Next we have is Combat Carl from the Toy Story of Terror short that Pixar released a few years after Toy Story 3 came out. Voiced by Carl Weathers, he has a lot of great articulation and his hand is removable just like that scene in the short. Next is a character from Toy Story that time forgot and she is the cutest character in all of Toy Story and it is Angel Kitty, or Kitty Saurus rather. I don't know if they actually called her Angel Kitty in that short, but I'm pretty sure the canon name is just Kitty Saurus. She's also made by Toy Story Custom, and she's extremely glittery. I don't know if you guys can see that on my fingers. And she steals every single scene that she's in when she's in that short. She's just so awesome. But here we are, guys. We are at our 90th character already. <laughs> I was trying to go as fast as I can with all those minor characters, and this one is no exception. This is the Sock Monkey from Toy Story That Time Forgot. Another iconic scene that this sock monkey was featured in. This dude gets absolutely shredded during a fight scene in the little gladiator pit. Defeated by Reptilius Maximus. All you see is a bunch of fluff just flying up. Pretty brutal scene. But that is it, guys. That was all 90 of my Toy Story characters. I'm shocked that I have 90 characters in my collection, and it's only going to get larger and larger as the years go by. Now the part that I'm most excited for, I'm gonna go set up all the characters on the table and that's where I'll give my final thoughts on the video. Okay guys, I don't think you're ready for this heat. Here we go. This is every single character that we looked at today. Let me know down in the comments which character you guys like the most. And this definitely didn't take me two and a half hours to set up. Definitely not. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a lot of fun to make. And I look forward to getting new characters in the future. The characters I'm looking to get next is an updated stretch, which you can see right over here. I want Cops Benson, which would look really good with Gabby Gabby over here. 
I still need Utility Belt Buzz Lightyear. He's a pretty expensive toy, but I'll get him eventually. The funny zoo animals from Bonnie's room in the fourth movie. The little rainbow train from Andy's room. A lot of you guys have pointed that one out to me that I completely missed. That toy totally flew over my head. And of course, Sid's toys from the first film. We have some of his sister's toys right here, but we really want his toys. But the only person that I know that sells them is Toy Story Replica UK on Etsy, but their shop is MIA and I'm not sure when they're returning. So when they do, I'll definitely definitely be picking those guys up. Another character I need is Bookworm from Toy Story 3, and I also want Toy Story Custom Zebra from the fourth movie. He's like ripped in half and there's stuffing coming out of his stomach. <laughs> And I mean, setting these guys up is hard enough, so can you imagine if I had Sid's toys in here as well? I mean, I literally would have no idea where to put them. I mean, maybe over here next to Hannah's toys. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And we're not doing any shout outs in this video today. I have something a little more special for you guys if you watch this video in entirety. This will be your reward. Okay guys, here's how the giveaway is gonna work. So I'm gonna show you three bundles, and all you have to do is first be subscribed to the channel, obviously, of course. Then you have to comment which number bundle that you want. And in the same comment, let me know which character you guys like the most out of my entire collection. And that's it. Just those three simple things and you guys will be eligible for my giveaway. So here's the first bundle, the Andy's Toys bundle, which includes Slinky Dog and Mr. Shark. Comment number one if you guys want this one. And the second bundle is the Bonnie's Toys bundle, which includes Buttercup, Mr. Prickle Pants, and Dolly. So comment number two if you guys want this one. And lastly, we just have bundle number three, which just includes this Barbie from 2010 that was included with the Animal Loving Safari Ken, and just this Toy Trixie. So those are the toys that I'm giving away, and I'm gonna announce the winners in one month. You know, it just gives everyone enough time to comment and watch the video. I'm either gonna go live on that day and announce the winners, or just make a post about it and put their names on there. This is just a big thank you present for all you guys watching my videos and sticking with me for three years. And if you happen to be one of the lucky winners, then you're gonna have to send me your address on Instagram so I can send it to your house. So comment down below and good luck everybody. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in a few months after I move into my new house. And I'm very excited about that. A whole new setup, a whole new room, better lighting. It's gonna be a fun time. So like and subscribe if you guys wanna see more. Let me know down in the comments what characters you guys wanna see next, besides the ones I already named off. All right guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.